Well, here's what it looks like to wake up in a 3D printed house. I'm here in Nelson, British Columbia in Canada at 20 Additive Manufacturing and they were kind enough to let me stay in the 3D printed Fibonacci house. This is a 3D printed house for 3D house printers. This is because it's not designed as a simple square. It's got all kinds of cool curvatures like this second bedroom that goes right into the wall and the mattress is actually cut out to fit the shape of the room. Since it's in a Fibonacci spiral, it has a very open space. We'll go downstairs in a minute, check it out. So we were just up on that lofted section and it's all timber frame. You can see the timber is resting on these vertical columns which were filled with traditional concrete. The Fibonacci spiral goes in both floors and over here becomes the bathroom. They went above and beyond adding high quality features like the timber frame roof and this really cool modern sink. It's part of why it's a great demonstration of a printer's printed home. It's not a box with four walls and a traditional roof. It really explores the possibilities, creating a shape that would be very challenging to create with traditional construction methods. Okay, for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to take you around the building and try to identify if you see any cracks in the concrete. At the end of the video, I'll show you where the crack was and we'll see if you were able to notice it. So the walls behind this uh, kitchen counter, they are a little bit different in texture from here to here, but the most important part is it looks like a pretty good finish. So even though these layers are kind of uh, more even looking than these, that probably has to do with the water content of the mixture. This one looks a little bit more granular, so if with a lower water concentration, you actually typically get a stronger finished product. They even included some clever projects here, which pay homage to various firsts of the industry. That super modern sink I was talking about is actually 3D printed and glazed to give it this nice finish and really water retaining ability for the basin of the sink. Round showers like this are an expensive add-on to any home that contractors usually loathe. However, with a printer, it's very simple to create a curve or a corner. Uh, the corners ideally would be a little bit less sharp so that you aren't dealing with changing direction too much. So by experimenting with how to integrate curvatures into a house, 20 has actually realized a layout I haven't ever seen before. I would be really fascinated to see the same shape scaled up to a larger home and make it maybe three bedroom or four bedroom and uh, maybe a full loft second floor full height. This house is really cool. Let's check out the exterior. One thing 20 really cares about is the environment. They're on this beautiful piece of land right on a corner of I guess two rivers kind of intersect on the Kootenay Lake. This piece, I believe, was meant to be part of the house, but as you can see, there are a couple imperfections. I believe instead of just throwing this away, they chose to leave it here as kind of a wind barrier for the grill, protects it from the weather, and makes this more of a space rather than just a outside slab. The view is incredible. You get a great look out the window when you wake up in the morning, and these giant columns are printed in a different material at a much higher resolution. If you look closely, those are almost some of them a thumb width, some are more like a pinky, and then over here it's about half the size layer width. What do you think, Dean? Go play. They've got the glass house over there and the 3D printed stairs that we noticed them installing last time when we were here over a year ago in September. Some of you might remember the bunny table and they're also now building a small pond. The pond is to do testing on a salmon ladder. They want to do the testing here in a private area before they try testing it where any real salmon live. But if it works, it could be a great way 
to help the salmon swim upstream in some rivers that have been impacted by humans encroaching on the natural environment. The house is really impressive in design and stature. It's probably 18 feet tall and the roof creates a large open space. My one consideration I think I would have made, they smoothed out the end of the Fibonacci sequence. It would have been really interesting to leave that all open as glass so that all you print is the Fibonacci rather than printing a Fibonacci and then closing it out. That being said, glass is an extremely expensive construction material that reduces the insulation properties of the building. Now we're around the back of the building and you can see where they have the utilities for the bathroom. The water has an outlet here and the electric goes in right through the wall. They seem to have patched it up with uh, either silica or maybe a similar type of concrete. Either way, it's painted over, so it's hard to tell what the material is underneath. They easily could put some kind of gasket around this, which would completely conceal the touch-up job. In every construction project, there's some level of touch-up that a carpenter has to do, and it's usually hidden by molding or something of that nature. What a beautiful piece of land, right? You've got the house over there, the mountains behind you, and these printed walls. What's really interesting that I noticed about these, they're tighter in resolution, kind of like the columns that we saw over there. But if you consider, the vertical height is about a centimeter. So this is the maximum you can push uh, in this direction. However, the angles here are not limited whatsoever because the robotic arm can be extremely precise as it deposits each layer. So in the X and Y axes, there's an extremely high level of resolution, even when the layer height is really high. You can really make out some of these more fine details and shapes, even though there's a one centimeter layer height. Huge thanks to Ian and the rest of the 20 additive manufacturing team. They've been so cool about letting me film their progress 3D printing and automating construction in Canada. Here's that crack I was talking about earlier in the video. It's actually in traditionally poured concrete. Cracks are something concrete experts learn to expect. It's a matter of when, not if. Printed concrete mixes are sensitive to this weakness of concrete and often try to find solutions to decrease the cracking that you see. This house doesn't have too much evident cracking. I recently launched the beta version of my course, How to 3D Print a House. Check that out at the link in the description. There's also now a private course member only forum to ask questions and discuss the innovations in 3D printed concrete.